Good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning we're going to talk about how I've navigated burnout. So let's jump right into it. Now you may have heard of or watched a show called Shark Tank. Now Shark Tank has a number of different investors uh, who have uh, have built companies or bought and sold companies uh, and have now moved into a place where on Shark Tank, they will uh, see potential in, in businesses and how they can bring value and then uh, and basically buy into that business, buy into uh, that vision of uh, that founder and be able to help them grow their business. Now, what you may not know is that those personalities uh, who are buying into those businesses, um, many of them have pretty challenging backgrounds. Many of them uh, have uh, disorders and have aspects where they have had to overcome, they've had to persevere, they've had to uh, you know, beat the odds of sorts in order for them to uh, be able to accomplish what they've accomplished. Now, that is common. That is common in the sense that so many people who have accomplished great things have also faced great hurdles, great roadblocks that they've had to overcome as well. Now, these personalities that I bring up from Shark Tank are those personalities who have decided that when the going gets tough, they don't get going, that they persevere, that they lean in, that they understand that mistakes will be made and they accept the risk that goes along with that. Now, that has allowed for them to have the ability to have a greater impact because they don't allow fear to hold them back from what could potentially be. Now, I've never wanted to be the one that gives up, that doesn't persevere, that doesn't show up, that doesn't step up. And so I've continued to lean in, to continue to grow and to learn and to see uh, the opportunity in the midst of it all as best as I can. Now, I've shared some of my journey in the introduction to margin around my career, around being a financial analyst throughout college, building up experience and being able to apply that as soon as I graduated to uh, a management position I stepped into. Now, I promoted fast and and arguably maybe too fast, but uh, but much of the steps that I took uh, set me up in order to be able to step out of college with both my degrees as well as applicable experience that I could apply to and add value to uh, the firm that I was stepping into. Now I shared that I have had to work overtime to learn, to grow, to level up and it seemingly was much more difficult for me than my peers. I just had to work overtime in order to accomplish the same things as some of my peers. Now, I believe that through this challenge, you really see what you're made of. You really see what you're capable of. You gain a level of grit, of perseverance, of, of not giving up, and you choose to basically take a more challenging path. You decide to take a narrow path that many most likely wouldn't be willing to take. Now, when I took on the role of becoming a CFO, uh, this was a goal I established in college. I just had no idea it would come so fast. And quite honestly, I was so focused on that goal that I didn't know what I was going to uh, to do once I actually achieved that goal. So, uh, so there I was as a 27 year old chief financial officer, if you're not familiar with the CFO for, um, term, uh, and it was of a multi-million dollar corporation with tens of millions in assets under management. And my specific role oversaw 11 departments and an average of about 55 employees. Now to say that I was excited about the position and opportunity would be an understatement. I was and still am so grateful for that opportunity that the board and the executive team believed in me and my character and uh, my competence, my experience, my education. Uh, but at the age of 27, I had so much to learn 
And, and that's why it was such a steep learning curve for me. Now, over the five years that I held that position, I found that I would work six, sometimes seven days a week. I'd be always on call, constantly on call. And I continued to take on more and more responsibility, which came with longer, and longer hours, longer, and longer days with less and less time to pour into my staff and also less time to, to basically build a life outside of work. And so my work became my spouse of sorts. Uh, but over time, I began operating in survival mode as the demands and the role, the challenges of overseeing staff and the need for rest just continued to weigh on me. Now, I was exhausted and that would be an understatement. Uh, and so the opportunity caused me to grow up fast, to face challenges professionally, personally and spiritually uh, that I'd never faced before. And I wouldn't want to relive that time. I, I wouldn't want to relive the stress, the angst, uh, the need to be always on, but I am so thankful for that opportunity. So as this position continued to push me to constantly get better, to constantly improve uh, and, and constantly level up, I learned the importance of self-care. I, uh, of building in morning and nightly routines, taking a full day off per week for the purpose of rest, as well as learning some difficult realities of pouring my all into something that wasn't mine per se and, and being an employee. Now I can't say that I navigated being burnt out well, but I did my best and I thank God that I didn't have a wife and kids at the time, uh, that I wasn't struggling with alcohol or some other bad habit that could have taken me out when I was already worn out, and that I was able to fulfill what I feel like I was uh, going to fulfill at that organization and helping them in the area that I felt like I brought the most value in. Now, what came from that season was a realization of how much I am capable of what my talents and strengths are, and well, I would say maybe even more importantly, what my blind spots are, what what I, I really need support in, and what I need to focus on in order to improve in my daily life. Now, through that time, I learned the importance of a positive compound effect. I learned how to take on more risk, but calculated risk. I learned how to surround myself with the right people uh, that make me better and, and I make them better, I improve them as well. And I learned that there is so much more opportunity out there than you and I even realize. So since then I've stepped more and more out of my comfort zone in investing in properties, businesses, and people and I've learned more on, on trusting myself, my judgment, and my analysis, my, my, my gut with, uh, with uh, making decisions. And I've learned to evaluate the expected best and worst case scenarios and being okay with not having it all figured out. Now, overall, I've learned to be more flexible and well, that was timely with the changes my company has gone through over the last couple years, the challenges I've faced with some relationships in my life, the uh, health and political climate over the last 18 months, as well as uh, having to shut down a business over the last couple years. Uh, there are so many challenges I've had to face that, uh, that I believe this experience allowed me to, uh, to be able to pivot and take on new opportunities and be excited about it. And I've realized that as I've grown, I've become better at navigating as well as better at responding to the issues at hand. Um, I have had some seasons that have allowed me to rest and truly recharge. And I've had others that have tested my capabilities and whether I was going to try and carry the weight of the world or whether I was going to do my best and trust they would all work out. But I would encourage you today to know what season you're in and, and really be able to accurately look at where you're at in life. Now, my call to action is to really recognize what burnout 
you may be susceptible to based on the season of life that you are in and to be proactive. Don't wait until you have a health scare. Don't wait until you have a setback in a relationship. And don't wait until you lose the excitement and zeal for life to make the appropriate change, all of which I faced uh, and I and I walked through and I and I was challenged with. But don't wait until then in order to make the appropriate change. Be intentional and be proactive to take care of yourself, because oftentimes, you know, uh, we can put organizations ahead of our needs and and not take care of ourselves. Uh, but we will pay for it in the future. And so we want to make sure to be intentional to take care of ourselves um, so that we are able to be engaged at that level uh, going forward uh, for all the things that uh, we want to be involved in in life. If this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow.